So over the past couple of years, I've done a few comparisons. I've compared budget stuff to new stuff. I've compared new stuff to new stuff. I've compared budget stuff to budget stuff. I've compared, yeah, a, a variety of things, CPUs, GPUs, and all that. But when it comes to what's available at a low cost versus what's available at a low cost, basically budget versus budget, um, NVIDIA doesn't really have one in this category. We sort of, but we're, we're going to talk about these two. So I have done basically benchmarks and all that stuff on the RX 6400. We do know it's a low profile. It's one of the only low profiles you can get that doesn't need external power. That's going to work in something like an older Optiplex. We've seen that. We've seen how it does with uh, PCIe Gen 3. We know that it has lacking. It's lacking in that because it, it basically requires PCIe Gen 4 to be able to run properly. And we're, we're taking a big hit when we step back to older platforms. We've also looked at this most recently. We looked at it in the i7-7700 and we took a look at it in the 12700 sitting there back behind me over that shoulder right there. Um, we do know that this runs better on the 12700 than it does the old i7. The old i7 makes the performance very, very poor in that. In fact, we took a look at both of these and, and kind of compared them with the RX, uh, with the GTX 1660. And we found that the 1660 obviously does better, but it takes power. The next one is probably the 6400, followed up by the severely limited uh, ARC 380 when we're trying to, to test older hardware. But what about when we use newer hardware? 12th generation is not that old and still a very viable platform. And both of these cards should do better with PCIe 4 and with the newer platforms, uh, especially with an Intel. So what kind of results do we get? About what you would expect. Uh, we're, we're going to look at some benchmarks here, and I'm not going to sugarcoat this for anybody or anything like that. Uh, I'm only going to look at 1080p numbers. I did test everything, 1440, 1080p, and all that stuff, and, and a bunch of different resolutions. Um, and basically, no, neither one of these cards needs to be running over 1080p. Uh, and you're going to get 60 frames per second on medium or low in all these. But the comparisons are a little weird, and, and we're going to kind of show that. Now, with the, the comparisons with the older hardware, the 6400 did come out on top. Sort of Shadow of the Tomb Raider starts the same way, where we're looking at a similar trend. It's like, okay, we already saw this movie. We know what's going to happen. Borderlands 3, similar but not quite. Um, where in high, there's something really severely clipping this. You'll see in, in a couple of a couple of these with high, and it, it's probably because both of these only have a limited amount of video memory. Uh, four gig for this one, six gig for the Arc 380. A380. Uh, Borderlands 3, uh, we still can't hit 60 frames per second. Somewhere along the lines, me, medium and low uh, has the RX 6400 coming out on top. But, you know, we're going to see later on that's not always the case. One of those cases is when we start to look at something like Cyberpunk 2077. Now, the RX 6400, for some reason, in high, just it does not like that at all. And I was looking, it looked like it, it provisioned enough memory. Um, I didn't see anything that was wildly just holding it back, but yet it only managed about 20 frames per second, whereas the RK380 got about 45. When you went to medium or low, that went away, and both of these are very comparable with each other in Cyberpunk. Uh, switching over to something like Forza Horizon 5, this is where the ARC A380 does take a little bit of a lead, but still, these are very, I mean, they're close to each other, similar to they were in Borderlands 3 and to some extent in Cyberpunk. With Forza Horizon 5, the, yes, the ARC 380 does come out on top, but you're still getting 60 frames per second with both of these. It's not going to give you any major wins or losses or anything like that. Uh, Counter-Strike 2. Now, when we're talking about eSports titles, you would figure this would be quite a bit ahead of any of the, the other measurements we've taken. But it tops out where the other cards were showing in the 80 frames per second or so, um, somewhere in that neighborhood with 1080p low. 1080p high were Counter-Strike 2. Now, believe me, or I, I do know, I am well aware that, yes, Counter-Strike 2 came out not too long ago on the DX11 API instead of the old DX9. 
but both of these cards should be able to handle that. And to not even top 100 frames per second with that uh, did surprise me a little bit on 1080p high. Both these cards did fine. They did all right. They were playable. There wasn't, uh, I didn't notice a whole lot of hitches, drop frames, or anything like that. But I kind of expected it to perform a little bit better with both of these. Uh, a couple things we need to also talk about. Ray tracing and stuff like that, I didn't even worry about with these. Okay, obviously we know that AMD does have FSR. Um, and of course, Intel has their own brand, XESS. Both of these worked fine. I left them on the, the default settings for things like Cyberpunk. And they didn't give me any problems at all. There was no issues, no problems. I am not going to run on either one of these cards any kind of ray tracing. That's just foolishness. Especially when we're not even hitting... You know, 90 to 100 frames per second and 1080p low. Uh, just not even thought of. What is the other advantage here? If the ARC 380 is kind of losing to the 6400 for the most part and a lot of these frame rate uh, and a lot of these frame rates, why should I even look at an ARC 380? And there's a couple of different things that I will tell you with that. For one, the A380 is still selling cheaper at between 100 and 120 bucks than the 6400 is. Now, the difference here, the 6400 is one of the only cards that comes in low profile that you don't need an external power for. You don't need external power for this either, but it is a higher profile. You can get the uh, ARC 38, A380s and 310s in a lower profile. However, they're going to be wider. The A310, I think you can get uh, in a narrow, similar to the 6400, but we're already looking at performance of the 380 being below, at or below the 6400. I don't think you want to go down to a 310 just to save that. Uh, both of those cards, however, are around 100 bucks, so it's kind of up to you. If these things all being equal are close to each other, with the 6400 being just a little bit better, not $50 better, but just a little bit better, why in the world would I go ahead and get an A380 anyway? Um, and that's totally up to one other thing we haven't discussed yet, the video encoding. If you are somebody that likes to stream or make videos or anything like that and you want to take advantage of, say, something like the AV1 encoder, this happens to have an encoder on it. Nope. Not a chance. Not even thought of. Uh, excuses were given. Uh, the 6400 does not have and will not have no support for video encoder at all. I believe the 6500 didn't either, but there's there's nothing. I mean, if you, you can still stream with this card in your system, either card in your system. But if you're streaming on that purple channel, you're going to be using your CPU anyway because the AV1 encoder is just now in beta with uh, a lot of these on, on uh, that purple channel. So you're not going to be able to use it yet in, in wide, you know, widespread. However, when it does come to that point, and on YouTube, you can upload videos uh, with the AV1 encoder, you can't take advantage of that at all. And we already know, comparing this to the A750, that it did a pretty good job. Uh, uh, all things considered. It, it ran right with the A750. Is it enough to make me want to go ahead and get one of these if I'm on a budget? If you're on a budget and every dollar counts, I might still go with the A380. Um, depending on what size you're trying to get into, which size you're trying to fit. The A380 is less expensive. It performs on par in, in a lot of cases and a little bit better in some other cases. And it has video encoding. I think the... Uh, the frame, the resolution, the frame resolution, or the enhancements there, they're about equal. I would say FSR and XESS work on both of these cards about the same. You're not going to get a whole lot of difference. Um, it does have two extra gig of onboard video memory, so that might be also something to think about. Uh, there are use cases for both of these. I am going to argue for this for the smaller frame for the smaller form factor i am going to argue for this for a regular budget type especially if you're only looking at spending 100 or 120 bucks a regular budget type on a newer platform where you might be able to save a couple of bucks on a, a newer platform until you can get a good video card and especially if you're just doing light gaming but say you are doing video encoding that's a pretty clear choice there Anyway, I just thought I'd take a look at these because I've been kind of looking at them and comparing and doing some other stuff and comparing these to other cards uh, and also in older hardware, but I hadn't had the opportunity yet to go ahead and put both of these in newer hardware. In fact, I hadn't even tested the 6400 at all 
with the 12700 that's back there behind me. So it was a good opportunity to do that. Um, yeah, so we found out what happens. It, this does not do that much better in that platform than it did in the Optiplex. Some, yeah, noticeably better, but not enough to sell the farm for. Yeah. So if you got anything out of this video, maybe just information, maybe, yeah, I don't know, maybe you're just curious. Maybe it's a question you never thought you wanted to know the answer to, and now you're like, hmm, okay. Um, yeah, go ahead and throw a like on the video. If you're not already subscribed, please do. I'd certainly appreciate that. Uh, still going strong. Have not been posting as many videos lately. I've been busy doing some other stuff, including not going to mention a car wreck. Th this spring has just been weird. Don't know when I'm going to get back on track. I'll do my best. No excuses. But, hey, it is what it is. Um, don't forget to visit me on the other socials. I am streaming a couple times a week on that purple channel in between. But, uh, you know, on top of doing everything else and just regular spring stuff, my goodness, it's crazy. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, if you don't do anything else, just be good to each other. Uh, and do something nice. I mean, just it do doesn't take anything at all to be nice to somebody wave smile hold the door open say good morning something just just be good to each other okay be good to your uh, be good to each other do something nice for yourself uh it doesn't cost anything to be kind and you might make you know you might realize you feel a little bit better for doing that and you have no idea what kind of influence you can have on somebody else's day just by being kind you know uh, i still am working on my uh, small form factor doing stuff on it i um I've had to put a couple of things on pause, mainly the RTX 3050. We don't know about that yet. Um, 3050 or 4050. We'll see. I don't know yet. But uh, in any case, that I'll get into those as I get into them. Like I said, I'm usually getting myself into something i got no business getting into. But until next time when that happens, I'll see you later.